Yo, yo, good evening. Good evening. It's Pastor Dixon. Um sitting here right now, just um waiting to see if I can get somebody to come online and see what's going on. Let's see what I can do. Yeah, good evening for those that are uh, have, have popped on right quick. This is Pastor Dixon. This is um, my first attempt at a, a Facebook Live. So y'all please uh, forgive my my, my uh, technical uh, insecurities here. I uh, haven't done this before, but um, wanted to make this the first um, introductory um, Facebook Live for the Dixon for Mayor campaign. There's a lot of issues going on out here. There's a lot of, uh, right now there's a lot of uh, problems as far as this election is concerned. So as we're moving forward, I want to make sure that I'm reaching people out here with a message uh, clearly defining where I'm at, um, where I even believe my opponents are, and where uh, the city of North Charleston the direction that we're going to head once I'm elected mayor of North Charleston on November 5th of this year. A new day is coming. Uh, for all of those that came out today to the birthday party, block party, thank you all so much. You all are just amazing. But what else can I say about, you know, our people, our people, our good people. And when I say our people, I'm not talking about a specific ethnicity. You know, Pastor Dixon, don't do that ethnicity thing. What I do is people. And people came out today, all ethnicities, ages, races, uh, economic statuses came out. And we had a good time. And we talked about hope. We talked about a North Charleston where everybody is taken care of. And over the next coming weeks, I think we got about seven, maybe eight weeks left to the election. Um, I'll be coming on Facebook Live uh, probably right around the 8.30 p.m. time period a couple of times a week. I'll give you plenty of ample uh, notification. Well, thank you very much, Pam, for that cool shirt. Yes. <laughs> uh, but there'll be ample notification about me coming on to talk about the issues that, that, that are concerning uh, to the people and the community. Issues that we don't have to continue to fall victim to, but the reality is that we can and will do better. Um, issues like um, gun violence and the amount of uh, uh, guns we have in the community. Um, there are ways that we can break this down and end this cycle of gun violence. We can cut the bloodshed down. Um, our failing schools, it's ridiculous, you know. Makes no sense. And the poverty level in North Charleston is crazy. 50% higher than the national poverty level in a city that brings in more money than any city in South Carolina. And guess who's broke? When we have a demographic that's about 59% people of color. I ain't got to even say who's broke. You know who broke. Okay. But for tonight, like I say, this is just the introductory. So I'm going to talk about all these different things. Make sure that you tune in. I think I'm going to do the next one probably on Tuesday evening where I'm going to talk about a specific candidate in this race. Okay. Gloves off. Ain't nobody got time to be playing with anybody anymore. I'm from the streets. I've been there. Been about that life. And uh, I've learned that even as a born again believer, sometimes you just got to go in. So I'm going in because this election is too crucial for us as a people. This election is too important for us to be fooling around, not supporting those that we know are going to do the right thing and playing games with other people who are out here lying and conniving and basically perpetuating the system that we're trying to get rid of. This is Pastor Dixon, and I'm telling you, you all know me. You all know the level of integrity that I work with. You all know when I say something, I mean it and I do it. The others, some we don't know, some we know are shady. But Pastor Dixon is that one, that one that's not all of that. And how do you know that? <laughs> I'll tell anybody, Google me. 
You already know the work that I do. But tonight, because I'm not going to stay on long, I want to thank everybody that came out today to the birthday block party. Man, an amazing event. I want to thank everybody that took time out to either say happy birthday to me on social media or to text me or those who just prayed for me yesterday. I thank you all so much. At 67 years old, man, my heart was over, overjoyed, overfilled uh, by the love that was shared by all of my friends, uh, associates, those that I've worked with over the years, those that I've cried with over the years. Thank you all so much. You all are phenomenal. And that's why I can't let phenomenal people be let down by nominal people, okay? Marginal people. People who talk more about what we can't do and what hasn't happened than those that talk about what, what, what is to come. So here I am. Here I am. And I want to talk to you tonight about just a couple of quick issues and then I'm going to pop off because I'm a little weary. It's been a long day. Um, I don't have that same stamina I had when I was 20 years old, but, you know, uh, that's all right. By God's grace, I am who I am and I be who I be. But... Got some issues out here. One of the issues I've been fighting with recently, though, has been yard signs. Shout out to Elvin Spates. Man, man, when you see something, say something. That brother caught some wrongdoing, what could have been wrongdoing, just in the blink of an eye. He looked up, saw one of my signs being used as a trash receptacle for storm debris, got that camera phone off, snapped off a series of pictures right quick. And sent them directly to me. We was on top of that thing so fast. Look, yeah. Man, Elvin, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. See, that's a brother that not only talks the talk, but he, he walks it, you know. He not only, you know, he be about, about the business. Uh, when we out here talking about if you see something, say something, he actually did that, okay. And, you know, uh, I, the people that were turned in, that were reported on, I never once heard them talking about, oh, he snitched on us. No, he reported it. Snitching is not the same as reporting. If you're not part of the crime, you know, it would have been a snitch if one of the two people that was picking up my picking up trash and putting them in my yard signs called me and said, man, my partner was putting up stuff, putting up uh, trash in your yard sign. That's what a snitch is. But see, Elvin didn't have anything to do with what was going on. So what he did was he called and he reported that the same thing works when it comes to gun violence in the, in, in the community. Same thing when it comes to criminal activity. You see Ray Ray going in Pookie's window, man, and you call 5-0 on, on Ray Ray, you not snitching because you wasn't going in the window with him. You're not part of the burglary. Only if you're a part of the crime and you tell, then you're a snitch. If, you, if you're not a part of the crime, what you're doing is you're protecting your community. Elvin Spates protected my interests, our interests, and actually the best interests of North Charleston when he called in and took those pictures and reported the fact that these folks were misusing my yard sign. Of course, I think in the end, it was an all, uh, a big misunderstanding. I think that was the only sign that was there, and it was reported that it was damaged, and the reason why they did it, even though they were wrong for doing that. The owner of the company apologized, and I'm not going to hold that against him, okay? Or those two who did that. Maybe they didn't know any better. So now it's a learning experience for each one of them, and it's opened up the door for each one of us to preach on if you see something, say something. But these yard signs, some of y'all know that I don't have yard signs everywhere as of yet, but I've definitely flooded the Rivers Avenue area from uh, down on the low end all the way up through uh, Otranto. And signs everywhere. I think it's really funny, you know, as I look at these uh, yard signs that I've put out over time, and, and others have put up yard signs also. I see the only ones that always get like leaning over to the side or whatever I just happen to be mine. Everybody else's signs just stay standing up. I'm not understanding that. Is somebody coming along and running them down or whatever? I don't, I don't understand that. I do know that there's been some shady activity in this election season so, thus far. I had two signs that just came up missing at the corner of uh, of uh, Otranto, or excuse me, not Otranto, but Green Ridge Road and Antler Drive. Two signs there that are no longer there. You know, 
Um, when I first started putting signs down, uh, my signs that were uh, right at that same intersection at Rivers Avenue and Green Ridge were run over. So I know one thing, I'm not doing it. And I don't think anybody that supports me is doing this. But I do believe that there are other subversives out here. People who, if the candidate that's running for office knows that this is going on and they don't speak out against it, this is not the kind of person that you want to run this city. I say again, if the candidate knows of any kind of activity that's going on like this and that candidate is not speaking out against that and telling his people don't do that or her people don't do that, then those are not the kind of people we need in office. We don't need shady people in office. You know, right now, North Charleston has an extremely bad reputa repu uh, reputation for shadiness in government. I'm here to turn that around. I'm here to fix that in North Charleston. I'm here to elevate this, as my good friend Papa Smurf calls it, mind elevation. I'm talking about city elevation at a city level. Everybody from a single mother to the formerly incarcerated to those right now who only get $7.25 an hour to those who have gone through a school system that failed them, everybody along the way, those who are incarcerated even right now, I'm here to say that shady people in office are the reason why we have those situations. And that's why we need somebody with the caliber and the ethic, the moral ethics of Pastor Dixon to take that seat. Somebody that will bring the city up and not let this city continue to wallow in, 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 de in decadence. And the truth is. If we as a community don't come up now, especially those in the African-American and Latino community, we're actually, we've been written out of the, 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 the future uh, history books for North Charleston. I figure in another years up under, another four years up, up under this uh, mayor's administration, those who live in, on the South End right now will no longer be there. They'll be replaced. I'm, I'm not a genie. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not a prophet. Definitely not a profit for profit, but I do know that there's some shadiness going on that's aimed at turning North Charleston and following the template of Charleston into the same demographic. When we look at the city of North Char of Charleston, excuse me, Charleston, 40 years up under Mayor Joe Riley, and I'm not patting Joe Riley on the back and never will, because in 40 years, North, the city of Charleston went from 75% African American to 75% white. And what happened to the brothers and sisters that, that were, 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 their futures were down, down there? <laughs> Mayor Riley didn't care. He didn't care. Just forced them out. And right now, if we continue to allow what's happening in North Charleston, it will be the same way in North Charleston in another four years, ten years down the road. We can stop that. We can build in mechanisms in order to make sure that our stamp, our ethnic stamp remains in North Charleston, while not only those that are thriving right now will continue to thrive, we also will thrive right along with them. Who said that we have to use gentrification that damages people, that takes from people, that robs people of their dreams? Who, who says that, you know? Whoever believed that, they believed the lie. Because the truth is, as the community rises, if the people don't rise, we fail the people. That's the bottom line. And we're going to stop that in North Charleston in order to make sure that those who want to maintain their living conditions in North Charleston will be able to stay and also be enriched to the point where they will also be able to rise. Now, in no way am I going to condone bad behavior. <laughs> Pastor Dixon, don't do that. Okay, you're wrong. You're wrong. I'm gonna call you out for being wrong. I don't care whether you're in the, in the mayor's office or if you're right there, bro, with, on the corner. Don't make me no difference. If you're wrong, you're wrong, and you'll be dealt with as being wrong. But anybody who wants to live right and do right and be a productive part of North Charleston, I will help, and I will set up the mechanisms there to help. Entrepreneurs, you will have help. Small businesses. You will have help. If you got a dream, an idea, and you're wondering which way to go in order to make that dream come true, you'll be able to come to your city hall 
and get help and find in that direction. Not somebody that's going to use you or misuse you. Not somebody that's going to set you up to get taken from. No, but somebody who is honestly and earnestly going to help you to be the success that you can be in this world. Right down to educating our children. And I know I'm going way off my script <laughs> for the night. But uh, by God's grace, it must be a, a, a leading in that way. Right down to our children. Where in North Charleston, that has eight of the worst schools in South Carolina. That's crazy. That's crazy. But we have companies like Boeing and Mercedes-Benz and Volvos, and we're looking for more companies to come here. But we have not had enough forethought and foresight to train our youth in those in the areas of these these big corporations so they could be moving into those jobs. With a mayor that's been in office 25 years who should have been ensuring the fact that our children were being trained and ready for when those new jobs that he was planning on bringing in came here. Failed them. Instead, you're pushing our people out of pushing our children out of eighth grade with third grade reading levels. Ridiculous. Telling them that college is the standard. And that kid is looking and saying, man, I can't even read how I'm going to college. Taking the trades out of the schools without saying a word about it. When there's a whole lot of kids out here who are not college bound, but they can non show work with a hammer and a nail or fix a car. Man. We're going to get back to the old standard here in North Charleston. We're going to turn this thing around. Back to the science. <laughs> back to the science. And two topics. Okay, first off, back to the science. I think it's really funny, you know, because a lot of you all have seen my signs out in North Charleston uh, in uh, um, Rivers Avenue, up and down Rivers Avenue. I put a heck of a lot of signs down there. And when I put them out, uh, first off, I put some out before the storm came through, uh, before Dorian came through. And uh, so the day before Dorian, though, I pulled them up because I didn't want my signs to become missiles. OK, in high winds, uh, these signs can become missiles and hurt people, actually. So I pulled mine up. Other folks didn't, but I did. OK. And so after her, after Dorian passed by, I went and put them back there. And so the majority of the signs that were out after I put them back down were my signs, Dixon for mayor signs. Some are everywhere. And for a long time, that's the only signs that you see. But all of a sudden, and of course, my opponents are going to put their signs down and I welcome that. But the one thing that I wouldn't do, first off, is to put a sign down anywhere near somebody where somebody else already has a sign down. I think that's tacky. I think it's shady. You know, it's like, OK, y'all, please forgive me. But, you know, I, I came from the streets. OK, but so I'm going to use a little analogy. You know, you out there hustling on the block. Right. And so you got somebody else that's coming up trying to trying to take over your spot. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. OK, but somebody come up trying to take over your spot. You know, so they just move in on you. Unfortunately, in the mayoral race, I can't just do what I might have done back in the day on that block to make sure that my territory was taken care of. But in this situation with these signs and whatever, ultimately, the people are going to decide who's got the best product and who's selling bunk, who's selling uh, uh, dummy packages uh, through their signs. Uh, some of y'all going to understand what I'm talking about. The others that ain't going to understand that. OK, but the reality is that there are some who are actually putting their signs up in front and the, the man in particular. And I know it's not him. It's his people out here. But once again, if you have people out here that's doing shady operations and you ain't telling them don't do that, you just it's bigger part of a problem. I looked up today uh, coming back home and I see like a, a mayor sign right in front of my signs and this, that and the other man. That's just tacky. That's tacky, you know, but the reality is, though, in the end, the people are going to understand that that was just a campaign ploy. And in the end, the mayor was selling nothing but dummy packages to the 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 the, 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 the poor people and, and, and the people of our community. Dummy political packages, you know, promising the world. Dummy packages like fish fries like fish fries. I think I'm going to touch on this right quick and then I'm going to shut down for the night and probably pick up in a couple of days, okay? And then you got, what are we, about 20 minutes in? Yeah. Um, fish fries. Mayor had a fish fry schedule for Ackerby a few weeks ago and he canceled that and everything. And um, I just saw, saw today that he's actually got a fish fry schedule for uh, tomorrow night over in Collins Park. Tomorrow night from 6 to 7.30. Yes, I'll, I'll put it out there. He's going to lose the election anyway, okay? But 
Collins Park tomorrow, 6 to 7.30, and Pepper Hill on Tuesday from 6 to 7.30. Go get your fish, right? Go eat. Eat. It can eat up everything. And then when you go to the polls, vote for Dixon for mayor. You know, ain't no sense in, I ain't saying don't eat. Go eat. But don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Let me tell you about the mayor, okay? Here's here's how, how how the mayor works, okay? Yeah, go eat. You know, don't 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 let them don't let them get away with that. Then go then go vote for me. It's all right. It's all right. That's not that's not using. You know, he ought to understand that we're already hip to that. You know, we've been down this road before. As a matter of fact, the Post and Courier quoted him in 2011, right? Post and Courier article in 2011. If you don't believe me, Google the article. It's right there. But the North, the, the North Charleston mayor, Keith Summey, was quoted as saying, for this election season, this was when he was running against Chris, Chris Collins in 2011, for this election season, he's going back to basics to get votes. Fish fries. I say again, and I quote, for this election season, he's going back to basics to get votes. Fish fries. Now he's having a fish fry in Collins Park and he's having a fish fry in Pepper Hill. And what's the predominant demographic in both of those areas? And he canceled one in Ackerby two weeks ago. What's the primary demographic there? Black folks. And if he's using fish fries, he says the back to the basics to get votes, fish fries. I'm quite sure that we are smart enough right now in 2019 to not fall for the same ploys that he used in 2011 and 2015. But go get the fish, though. Yes, go eat. Eat them up. And then leave there. Toss up the dukes and say, I'm going to vote for Pastor Dixon because Pastor Dixon, he ain't trying to con us, beat us or cheat us. And he ain't got to cheat to cheat to win. Straight up, tells you what it is, and then does what he says he's going to do. So, this is just some reality about it. These chats that we have, I'm going to be having these chats every couple of days or so. And like I said, I'm going to talk about some issues, and I'm going to talk about some candidates. You know, I'll just share my opinion, my First Amendment right, you know, which I support the First Amendment. I'm going to talk about the issues. I'm going to talk about gun violence and what we'll do in order to fix that problem. I'm going to talk about our education and how we fix. And I am so fed up with this system. You know, you know what I'm more fed up about is every time I see Mayor Summing, you know, for the state of the city address every year, it's rosy. It's peachy king. It like ain't nothing wrong with this city. It's just a beautiful old place. When the reality is, for most of the people that look like me, it ain't beautiful. It's not like that. Then when I look on Facebook at the little government page and all of that, and they have him, he's always got two, three little black kids surrounding him and carrying on, as if we are stupid enough to fall, fall for that. No, we're not. Not anymore. He even pulled out a whole, a whole new bag of tricks recently. Last year, he went out uh, passing out sleeping bags to the homeless people. Instead of giving them a home by making sure that Naval Hospital got renovated when they first bought it instead of selling it for a, five, for a $3 million profit. We could have had homes for the homeless right there in Naval Hospital instead of giving them out some darn sleeping bags, something that he has no track record of doing prior to last December. You know, We're going to fix this. We're going to fix this. We're going to fix the school issue, and we're going to get people paid. We're going to get people paid. We're going to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour here. I got one candidate that's talking about raising it to $25, and that, that candidate never even fought for $15. So, come on, man. Campaign rhetoric. Campaign rhetoric. Pastor Dixon is the truth, the real deal. I'm not bragging on myself. If you don't believe me, fact check me. Google me, and you'll see. What I'm talking about is just real truth. When it comes to gun violence, I'm on the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence. National Board of Trustees. And recognized last year by the National Bar Association for what I've tried to do to end gun violence in my own city. I'm the only candidate probably been shot at in the hood, but they missed. The runoff office. So you tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. But when I tried to talk to this mayor and the city council and this law enforcement office, uh, office right here under uh, Chief Driggers and Chief Zumog, 
they ignored me as if I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, in order to not get ignored anymore, we're just going to take the office. I'm going to let that sit right there. We are going to take the office. Welcome to the revolution. This is Pastor Dixon. Looking forward to hollering at y'all in another couple of days. Y'all hit me up. Uh, check out my website, www.dixonformayor.com. Um, follow me on Twitter, Dixon for Mayor 2019. Follow me on Instagram, Dixon for Mayor 2019. Man, holler at your boy. If you got issues going on, holler at your boy. Straight up. I'm the same person that folks been turning to for years. Knowing that you're going to at least get somebody that's going to listen and try their best in order to, to, to turn this thing around for you. I, I guarantee you, out of all of the candidates running for right now, run, running for office right now for mayor, if you got in trouble, which one would you call? It's Pastor Dixon. Looking forward to talking to you all soon. Y'all take care. Peace out. Love y'all.